So we have some uh, very interesting news uh, this morning. News is that the E-4B Doomsday plane just made a highly unusual visit to secretive Tonopah Test Range Airport. Now, wow, this is in Nevada and this is vitally important and, and it basically is showing that something is afoot. And I've said this before many times that um, for the Secretary of Defense to be on board this plane and make this sudden stop over at Tonopah in Nevada, this is very near Area 51. Now, um, what could this mean? So we've got to think very cleverly about what the enemy is doing. The enemy has a plan. He's always got a plan. And um, I'll read you some of this article, but you're going to get an idea that if this event occurs, and it's going to, and I'm involved in media in a very large way, um, there is a document floating out there, which um, uh, I'm always concerned about using certain words on, on programs like this in the age of mass censorship. Of course, we have to be careful. But there's a document out there that uh, was not given to us. In fact, when we went for a press briefing, the document uh, was not given out. It was shown, not given out. Everybody had to keep their mobile phones in a locker on the way in and no one was allowed any recording devices, etc. We were told, this is a while ago, um, that there was a mass evacuation and a deployment action event, a simultaneous event that was potentially going to be happening sometime soon. Now, this was back in May. And um, the, the core of media staff who stood around and listened to this brief, remember we hear briefs a lot for all kinds of things. We really became quite, um, quite curious about what this might mean. And at first we thought, well, it must relate to something completely different. Those who were Christians, had to, we all had to fill in a form. And one of the things that was on this form was the question over religion. If you were a Christian, you moved to page 11, which meant you were out of the room. I left it blank. Uh, and eventually I put in there, prefer not to say. There was a little tick box, prefer not to say. M-E-D-A was the name of the document. And it had all kinds of... Um, uh, logos uh, on the bottom of this document and ME stood for mass evacuation and the DA stood for deployment action. Now the mass evacuation was uh, on the basis that something was coming. There was some mass evacuation that was going to play out and uh, we thought maybe it had something to do with a crisis of some kind, a meteorological crisis or a nature crisis, a storm, a fire. Anything. I mean, in Australia, it's a very large island. It's a massive place. You know, anything can happen. There are uh, typhoons, hurricanes, storms. Um, that was potentially what we all thought. But at the back of my mind, I, I made one and one equals three. I thought this is definitely the harpazo that they're talking about. The harpazo, you know, the snatching away of the church. Uh, into heaven, come up hither, as it says in Revelation. And uh, the deployment action is what happens immediately after the mass evacuation happens on the earth. The mass evacuation, and as I said, this is a, <laughs> a, a government doc. I, I'm not sure that it's related to the Harpaxo, but it is definitely related to some event that's coming. There's some event that's coming. Now, this was May, June, July. Uh, we're now on the 25th of July, which is, um, which is interesting because the deployment action is supposed to follow immediately after that. The deployment action is really the deployment of troops. And um, these are people that are going to go door to door and find out if you haven't been uh, given the abomination of desolation. You know what I'm talking about, right? If you haven't been given the abomination of desolation, we're the third temple. It is the desolation of our temple. It is the abomination of desolation. 
if they're coming around to ask you, and I don't think it's to ask you, I think they're coming around to give it to you, right? That's what's going to be happening immediately after this mass evacuation. It is also about a census, a mass census that will happen immediately after the the mass the um, the mass evacuation. See, the mass evacuation is going to mean that literally hundreds of millions of people will be lifted off, moved off of the earth, right? In a mass evacuation for which the government has been planning uh, for for a very long time. Project Bluebeam being one of them. The question comes up a lot. Why is it that we know about these things? Why is the enemy telegraphing to us what's actually happening? Why is the enemy, I'm not going to use the word telegraph because most people don't know what telegraph means, but telegraphing is communicating, you know, not through smoke signals, but quite, quite powerfully, quite visibly with neon lights almost sometimes that they're going to be doing something or that they've readied a technology. You see, one of the rules, one of the, the, the rules of engagement which the enemy, Lucifer, is under is that he has to tell people. He has to tell the world because then evidentially, like we see in, in the law courts, if you were privy to that information or if you were told or it was made available publicly, well, then you should have known, right? It's assumed that if you want to be good custodians of your life and the lives of your family members, that you should really be good custodians and you should be vigilant. You should be watchmen, good watchmen and see what's happening in the world. Because if you don't see and you don't know and you're still fast asleep, whose fault is it? The enemy did what he was supposed to do within the laws, the rules of engagement. He, he followed the, 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 the precedents that are required for, um, for the, the legalism, the procedure of legalism to be effective. The enemy is smart, very cunning, and he has been doing all of this re revelation of information to people through various means, sometimes through pulp classics, sometimes through the motion picture industry. In fact, the enemy has funded the motion picture industry uh, to a large extent, especially the Hollywood world. Right. He has funded uh, the funding that comes out of <laughs> that goes into the motion picture industry has come out of money laundering. It's come out of uh, Jeffrey Archer's got a great book called The Laundry Man. You got to read it. And uh, and a lot of the money that we see entering into the motion picture industry is dirty money. It's money that has come out of uh, the drug world, right? The drug scene. So it is it is used by the enemy like all dirty money for black ops, special ops operations, uh, for the motion picture industry, but always to communicate what his next steps will be. And uh, it's a, it's a one-two punch strategy because the one-two punch is the first fisticuff is to indicate something. Sometimes it's a little crazy, sometimes it's unusual, but he'll predictively program you into seeing something, especially through media. Once you've seen it, the next uh, fisticuff is to create the illusion that it's just conspiracy, right? There's information, disinformation, misinformation, and disinformation is that second fisticuff. It's his way of communicating that it's a conspiracy. In fact, most things are given that appellate, that name, that they're just CTs. And because that happens, guess what? The world is justified through its mainstream media. It's justified in explaining away what you thought you saw, right? So the enemy is playing a very cunning and very insidious game. He tells you says it's crazy, come on, how can you believe that? And then he does it, right? It's quite a strategy, quite a stratagem. I'm gonna read you this article because it's a fascinating article. Um, the USA has got these very important airplanes and uh, the E-4B doomsday plane um, just made a very hot, unusual visit 
to this secret test range site called Tonopah in the Nevada desert. And on board was the Secretary of Defense. Now, uh, what's coming? Do they know something we're not aware of? For them to go out of their way on a mass um, uh, E4B, it's a 740787, um, using a Titan 25 call sign, which is usually a sign when the Secretary of, of Defense is on board. Now, for them to go off and have a secret meeting in the desert is, uh, is unusual, right? Especially for it to be broadcast like this. Now, this has come from the drive. <laughs> and uh, this, is, uh, this is kind of like mainstream at the moment. It's being communicated, right? Later, it's just conspiracy people. Stop going there. However, in a highly unusual move, what we're seeing is basically a Nightwatch aircraft. And it's got another name, which is the National Airborne Operations Centers, or NOACs. And it touched down at Tonopah, the test range. And um, it's one of the most basically secretive aircraft operation operating locations in the United States. Uh, what might have triggered this highly unusual visit is basically unusual, as they say. They say it's kind of puzzling, but it seems to me um, that they may uh, be relating this to a possible visit to the facility by the Secretary of Defense, Lloyd J. Austin, three. I say these things in that way for various reasons, right? Um, what we're basically seeing here is widely referred to as the, the Doomsday Plane, as one of the Doomsday Planes. The Air Force's four existing E-4Bs are based on Boeing 747 A-frames and are basically, um, they provide a robust and survivable, survivable airborne command post in the event of something happening. Now, is something going to be happening? If there was a mass evacuation of the church, of hundreds of millions of people off the face of the earth, what would that do? It would create utter chaos. The world's leaders would have to find a way to suddenly disappear, to go to bunkers and shelters, because the masses would go ballistic. Think about it. People would go into shops, stores. They, their looting would be unbelievable. The army would, which is now stationed in most cities, by the way, in readiness, the armies would start knocking on doors one after another because they would need a compliant populace and the only way to get them compliant was to insert the abomination of desolation because that would make them instantaneously triggerable and manipulable once G5 was turned on worldwide to create an infrastructure and net over the earth. The other thing too is the timing. I really believe that uh, there's another reason for the abomination of desolation being put into people. There's another reason why, and that is if G5 was on and they had been uh, given the abomination of desolation, uh, once turned on, would they be a human being? Would that human being be allowed to be harpazoed? Would a human being be permitted to be raptured? Right? Um, on the night, on the day, simultaneously, of the rapture, when your angel suddenly appears in front of you and is there to lift you into the sky to meet with them in the clouds so that we can be with our Lord forevermore, the angel has to be able to find you and identify you. And the only way that that's going to happen is if God's name remains intact in the makeup God's image is within us, right? In our dirabinucleic acid, in our DNA. If the sulfite bridges, which are now 10565, yed, he, vav, hey in gematria, right? 10565. If those numbers are substituted with the existing 10666, which is what they're attempting to do, then what's going to happen is that your angel can't find you. Your angel cannot lift you into safety. It is a mass evacuation order. That's what we're looking at that's coming, right? The rapture is a mass evacuation of the church. 
and it is about to happen. It's a it's a an eschatological event that many uh, of certain denominations. There's five denominations that are really cult denominations that don't believe in the rapture. These five cult denominations were set up on purpose through false prophets to poo-poo the idea, to make the idea incredulous, unbelievable, to really belabor the point and discourage Christians from believing, true Christians, true believers in Christ, from believing in this end times event. Now, if you've read John uh, Walford's book on the rapture or followed any of Andy Woods's 50 odd hours of information on the rapture, there should be nothing inside of you already now that has any disbelief in the rapture. It is true doctrine. It is right there. It is a mystery which is being unveiled and unraveled for this age, right? Just like the book of Daniel was sealed and would not be understood until the age, the time of the 70th week of Daniel. This is happening right now. The mass evacuation is about to happen with the consequent deployment action which will occur in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Human beings will go from being corruptible to incorruptible, from being mortal to immortal. And the Lord himself shall descend from heaven and with a shout, the cry of command, the voice of the archangel the trump of God, the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then we who are alive and left shall be caught up to meet with them in the clouds, to be with our Lord forevermore. Encourage one another with these words.